Okay, I will call to order the uh, Durham Planning Board informational meeting on the 12th of October. And we have four members present, so we have a quorum. And so I'll introduce myself. I am uh, John Talbot, the, the chair of the board. And um, the topics tonight are uh, affordable housing and uh, some tweaks to the roads, verbiage in our land planning, land use ordinance. And so, um, first off, welcome to everybody for coming. And uh, thank you for participating. And uh, just kind of go over a little bit about what we're going to do. Mr. Thabar, the town planner, will give a uh, introduction to the, the uh, state law that pertains to affordable housing, a couple of options that uh, we're looking at, um, and then also do the same thing with roads. We'll open it up, we'll have a planning board discussion about first affordable housing, and then we'll go through that with public input, and then we'll shift gears and go on to the road stuff. So I wanna keep them as two different topics, so when I bounce them from roads to affordable housing to so on and so forth. So, uh, and the term affordable housing is a misnomer. So if there's a, been a rumor out there that this, is, this allows 12 story, uh, apartment buildings, that's not the case. This involves for a town the size of Durham and Georgia, go through in greater detail, uh, is a much smaller impact than that. So the history behind it, quick and dirty, and Georgia go through the detail. The state passed a law recently that goes into effect the 1st of July that says you you must do certain things when it comes to housing de uh, density. And he'll go into the details on that. So we are, the goal of the planning board is to put together an article that will address how the town wants to uh, address that issue. And uh, it will go before the town meeting there in the first Saturday of April. So, and then the, the same with the roads. The roads questions came out of the last town meeting where there was an article before the town that did not pass. Uh, and so this scales back some of that effort. And our real goal, starting with this evening, is to get town input, get that information out there, so that everybody, when they vote in April, can make a uh, informed decision. They understand what it is we're doing, and it won't come as it'll come as a surprise to those who haven't paid attention for four months. But hopefully, uh, those of you in here that watch the movie, and oh by the way, the young lady in the very back is filming this. So I always start off, I remind myself not to, to watch my language and not try not to say anything stupid. Um, so the film will be on the town website here by uh, in the next few days. The key is that there's no decision gonna be, no vote, no decision tonight. This is strictly informational. So I'm gonna take your comments, comments of the board, and start putting together our thoughts and how to best write the, the two articles. So with that, I will let Mr. DeBarge start off talking about affordable housing. And everybody, I think, has gotten a package. I see lots of yellow. So. Thank you, John. So as John indicated, the, the legislature back in uh, April passed a law, the governor signed it into law, that requires every municipality in the state of Maine to make adjustments to their uh, zoning codes. Uh, to deal with the goal of it, and it is called, it afforded, it's being called the affordable housing law. So uh, the information that I'm presenting to you tonight came from a few sources. One is the Department of Economic and Community Development has been, the state, the state has been assigned a responsibility to uh, develop some rules that implement the law. So this is, this little summary of what we have to do is, uh, it came from the Department of Economic and Community Development. And then I've also got some information from Durham's comprehensive plan that makes recommendations on housing policies. Uh, and then I've developed some just kind of graphics and you've got, you've seen the, some of the graphics that I've provided, prepared and provided to kind of help just visualize what we're talking about. So we're gonna walk down through that. And then at the very end of looking at all the graphics and stuff, I just wanna look at the specific language of the law to see where these conclusions were drawn from. Because there is some interpretation of different language and the Department of Economic and Community Development's gonna be looking at it. The, the law was uh, relatively vague on some, a lot of issues, so it's hard to understand exactly what it requires and what it doesn't require. So again, this is an ongoing process. 
But the reality is, in order to have the uh, materials ready for consideration at next year's town meeting, we can't wait for the state to finalize this process and get the warrant articles and everything ready for the town meeting. So I just wanted to emphasize that uh, this will be developing over the next few months and there may be some changes. But overall, I think you'll see we're pretty close to having a good understanding of where we need to be. So uh, just to help everybody kind of visualize uh, some of the dimensions of what we're talking about, uh, this is a slide showing some uh, parcels in Durham. Uh, this is the town-owned parcel on Swamp Road where the ball field was proposed. Uh, and this is the new Ruby Lane subdivision before they cleared for the road. And the, this is a two acre lot, uh, approximately 300 feet wide by 300 feet deep. This is a four acre lot, and that town owned parcel, it, it's somewhere between eight and 10 acres. It scales off at eight acres, the town list is at, at 10, but uh, give you a general sense. So uh, here's uh, what the current zoning uh, allows and requires in terms of single family uh, is required to have a minimum of two acres, which is that 300 by 300. Uh, and it's, you're allowed, and a duplex, by contrast, has to have an extra half acre. So you have to have two and a half acres to do a duplex. The single family can have an accessory apartment, which can either be uh, as, as an addition. This graphic shows a house with a garage, a detached barn slash garage, and then you could put an apartment over that, or you could put an apartment in an addition or you could put an apartment, an accessory apartment, into the main unit, say in a daylight basement. Uh, but it can only be 50% or half the floor area of the main dwelling unit to make it accessory. And there are specific requirements for that. The other option is to do a duplex if you take two and a half acres. Those are not currently allowed to have an accessory apartment. So only single family, so the limit on both uh, is two units. So you could have a single family plus one accessory apartment or a duplex and two units. Now this is already farther in terms of the direction that the legislature is trying to go than a lot of towns. A lot of towns really don't make it easy to do these accessory apartments and many, many towns don't allow duplexes. So Durham is already in partial compliance with the law. So what the new law says <coughs> is that you, uh, you can keep these lot sizes are fine, uh, two acres for the duplex and, uh, or excuse me, two for the single family, 2.2 2 and a half acres for the duplex, but you have to allow three units on a developed lot that has one dwelling unit. So they have to allow, you have to allow two more in addition to, so, and it's not clear uh, in the law as we'll see, but theoretically you could add another single family home as well as uh, an accessory apartment, either in an addition or over the garage, but you're limited to a total of three. They say that for vacant lots, and so they make a distinction between the developed lot and a vacant lot. On a vacant lot, the, the, um, the new law says you must allow two units, and the language is a little bit unclear whether that has to be a duplex or it could be two standalone single family dwellings. And over the four years that I've been working with the town, we have had uh, multiple inquiries along these lines, people wanting to put in uh, three houses on one lot, all family members, uh, and so we've seen some of the interest in doing this. So that's what the new law requires. Again, on a developed lot that has one, you have to allow two more for a total of three, and on a vacant lot, you have to allow at least two units. So uh, here's uh, another important point that I, I mentioned. In the law, it assigns to the main Department of Economic and Community Development the authority and responsibility if they choose to pursue it, which is always a question, uh, and if they get funding uh, to uh, rules to administer and enforce this. And uh, in doing so, they have to consult with another state department that's over land use planning and then the rules, as I understand of this citation, is for something that's gonna be a regulatory uh, uh, set of rules, they have to get it approved by the legislature. 
as opposed to simple administrative rules. So this may require quite a lengthy process to get go through their, their fact, public hearings and fact finding and then get it through a legislative process. So it could be after April that this is actually, they, they make their final decision. And then implementation, part of the reason that that can work is that municipalities are not required to implement until July 1st of next year. But again, Durham has a town meeting in April. Theoretically, the town could do a special town meeting to deal with this, but we're putting it on the track to be ready for the April 1st town meeting. Uh, one of the important things, uh, could you hit that light please, <coughs> just to show that up a little bit better? Okay, so one of the things is they have in areas um, just like Durham, uh, again, it's uh, two units on a vacant lot, and then in areas of designated growth areas, and you may recall in the last update to the comprehensive plan, we eliminated the Southwest Bend Growth District, and so the parts that require up to three or four units does not apply to Durham because you no longer have a growth, designated growth area. So you would be, uh, again, two units on a vacant lot, and three units on uh, a lot with an existing home. And then they're talking, uh, just kind of giving details. And one of the things, they, their interpretation is this says up to two dwelling units if attached. But I'll show you the language that's questionable that they have to be attached. So right now, just with the law, but they could make rules that clarify that it must be a duplex, which would be what, exactly what Durham has now. So in looking at um, what option to pursue should the town move in this direction. I think the starting place for the community is the adopted comprehensive plan. And in 2018, as I mentioned, I could probably get that light uh, again just because I think we're through the worst slide here for the visibility. Uh, thank you, Jim. Yeah. So I think maybe is there a book up or just one? Did you need both? Just one. Just one. Okay. Um, and if anybody has probably seen that, please let me know. We'll see if we can adjust it more. Okay, so uh, the, the comprehensive plan, as I stated, uh, eliminated the Southwest Bend Growth District. It called for higher density housing in the plan. Uh, that was eliminated. The town went with straight rural zoning all across the town, minimum lot size of two acres, as we discussed. So, but there was a recognition for the goal of having more housing options for people that want to live in town, like particularly children of current residents. Uh, we have school, so you know, trying to find housing for the workforce is a real challenge all through Southern Maine. So the comprehensive plan adopted goals, which pretty much line up with the, with the new state law. So you see with elimination of the Southwest Bend Growth District, consider allowing three unit and four unit multifamily housing in addition to duplexes in the rural district with design standards to make them compatible with typical Durham housing. For example, allow an accessory apartment on a duplex. And if you have a farmhouse style fourplex that looks like a farmhouse with four units in it, that would be the type of design control to consider uh, to protect rural character. And then this second one was to explore options for tiny homes. The state legislature also adopted a new law that requires towns to allow tiny homes equivalent with a single family or an accessory apartment. So the code officer already has to follow that. And then finally, as far as housing recommendations that apply to what we're talking about, amend the land use ordinance to allow duplexes on a two acre lot, unless there's an objective basis like the aquifer protection. It really doesn't, it's hard to justify, explain why you have to have an extra half an acre for a duplex. Uh, so that, is from the comprehensive plan. So one option for the planning board and the town to consider would be going with the comprehensive plan recommendations, which I said are very much on the same track as the new affordable housing law. So you would uh, reduce, based on the comprehensive plan recommendation, two acres for a duplex, two acres for a single family dwelling. You would allow on that single family, existing single family home, You'd allow, currently they're allowed to have one accessory unit and you could put one in an addition or one over the garage for a total of two, uh, two new, new accessory units, but they could only be accessory units. Half the, the floor area of the, of the main house 
but they could do a total of three on that currently developed law. On the vacant lot, in consistency with the town law, uh, excuse me, the state law, the town currently allows a duplex, and the comprehensive plan recommends that you allow it, uh, one accessory apartment, so you would end up with a total of three units. So that's a comprehensive plan recommendation, and it moves in the direction of being less restrictive on housing uh, in terms of the goals of the comprehensive plan. The second option is just simply add the language of the state law. We don't adjust lot sizes, don't try to control the design, whatever the state a lot requires you to allow. Just keep it simple and, and slap that language into the ordinance and however it comes out, do the least amount of work or change the ordinances as possible. So that's kind of a neutral the third option, because there are concerns we've heard in the public process and on other uh, rounds of this land use planning, that there are concerns that the town is growing too fast, it's too dense, and therefore we're presenting a third option, which would be increased restrictions. Uh, and what that would do potentially is counterbalance the extra units that the state is saying you have to allow so you could dampen some of that growth uh, by requiring instead of the current two acres for a single family, uh, excuse me, you could re you could up it under the law to four acres. Um, and so I'm sorry, uh, a single family would be two acres, but a duplex would be four acres. And theoretically, you could also increase it for a single family up to four acres to make it the maximum restriction, sir. Uh, do these take in consideration of properties that they may not be? suitable for like enough septic field for multiple Okay, locations. so on all of this, there may be restrictions on the property, like you say, can't pass a soil test. The other thing is the law specifically says that a subdivision that's approved, where the developer puts on private covenants, this is not required. So if the, if the developer puts in covenants and people buy the lots with restrictions, one single family only, this law specifically exempts that. So that would be what I'm just calling more restrictive or maximum restriction. Uh, so those are the three options that we've kind of crystallized. However, two things. Number one, remember, it's subject to the process and could change. But there's a fourth option, which would be to take one of these and start adjusting it. So for example, you might put add the design, design restrictions onto this one or onto the state. So you, these are three options, and it could be a fourth, which is to modify uh, one of these. So here's the law itself, just to show you what it says, okay? So I've highlighted kind of the relevant ones. So the first part of it, uh, this part one of this new statute, which says, a municipality shall allow with up to structures with up to two dwelling units per lot if that lot does not contain an existing dwelling unit. So that's where we get that vacant. You have to allow at least two units. Um, down below, a municipality shall allow on a lot with one existing dwelling unit, the addition of up to two dwelling units, one additional dwelling unit within or attached to an existing structure or one additional detached dwelling unit or one of each. And all the planners and lawyers across the state are like, what, how do you, <laughs> you know, what is that exactly, does that mean? Um, and then thirdly, uh, on this, same slide, municipality may, may allow more. It's not saying this is the limit, it's saying you could allow more. And then again, I mentioned the rules that are being developed by the Department of Economic and Community Development and the implementation deadline, which is next July. And if the town doesn't do something, it goes into effect automatically what the law, state law says. And then on accessory dwelling units, again, they're trying to uh, make all towns do what Durham currently does in terms of uh, requirements for and allowances for accessory apartments. And pretty much Durham is already in compliance fully with the accessory apartments. Now, there is one important fact in this part though, and that is it says uh, you, you can't apply density calculations to accessory apartments. So back to one of those earlier slides, you can't require, uh, if you only require two acres for a, for a single family, you can't require four acres if they add an accessory apartment. 
Accessory apartments are specifically exempted from any types of dimensional requirements, like you have to have a wider lot, you have to have a bigger lot. Accessory apartments are accessory. Uh, and so then there's some language in here about the, you know, connecting them. And you can't add, require more parking, which is not an issue in Durham anyway. And again, they're gonna be doing rules, and this has gotta be in effect by next July, or it goes into effect automatically. So that's pretty much uh, what I have given the planning board, and I welcome your questions first, and whatever thoughts you might have about it. Audience questions on Ben, we're just gonna okay. get discussing here a little bit, but there will be an opportunity to <coughs> I turn to the right. Does the planning board have any questions, comments for George in general before we take public comments? I think one of the, the big things that we have to look at uh, whenever we bring forth any ordinances within the town, making sure that they comply with the comprehensive plan. And sometimes people will challenge us and say they don't agree. And one is the language is subject to interpretation, but I think when we, we do a process like this, and if we stick with the comprehensive plan, we meet the comprehensive plan guidelines, uh, it's really not subject to interpretation by bringing an ordinance through that is different than the comprehensive plan. I don't have any comments in terms of doing public comments. <laughs> uh, just one comment that, uh, to me, the, I think one of the big differences is talking specifically about uh, detached or attached dwellings. Um, and I know like the option one looks specifically at adding only attached accessory apartments. And I think just moving forward in the future, we should try and be clear about saying whether we're including attached or detached dwelling units. Okay. Um, to kind of follow up with Tyler said, I, I still in my mind a little bit confused that does it only require accessory apartments or could you, if you had a single family home, could you put in another single family home? Does it have to be an accessory apartment, I guess is what I'm asking. Or could it be a tiny house? Could it be, you know, another house that fits within all the dimensions and all that other kind of Well, stuff? based on what the town attorney has, has told the uh, code officer, with the new law on tiny homes, a tiny home has to be allowed as either an accessory apartment or for accessory unit or a standalone single family. So that is already settled. The question becomes whether or not you could put, as some of the slides show, two single family homes on the same lot. That's something that you could specify. And again, that may or may not be affected by what the state uh, DECD decides. But just based on their slides that I showed, they're moving in the direction of saying duplexes as opposed to two standalone single families. Uh, and I think they're probably looking at the same thing for that existing single family, adding more accessory units. That's what their graphics show. But until they write the rules, which people could be giving them input in their public process to say, oh, no, 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 you should allow multiple single family homes, uh, that will, that will be determined in the future. So I guess to clarify my question, at least in my mind, is a it's not required that you allow a standalone single family house. It is required to do it an accessory unit. Well, it you requires it, it, it hasn't really clearly stated what, whether it can be standalone or not. It's just said you must allow units. Okay. And in the case of I think it was a, uh, the single family, and we'll go back to that language which is why it's confusing. Uh, so look right here, this, this language right here, municipality shall allow on a lot with one existing dwelling unit the addition of up to two dwelling units. Doesn't specify whether it's single family or accessory. One additional unit within or attached to the existing structure or one additional detached dwelling unit so theoretically, that could be a single family home. Yeah. So that's a, that's a required. Or one of these, it says you have to allow you have to have a number of units. That's the main thing that language is focusing on. Because our language, of units. the language in the proposal, the optional, is all accessory units. Yes, which are and I think the compre our comprehensive plan would support that. 
Now, whether the DECD will say, oh, no, 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 you gotta allow two single family under the state law, that could be a possible outcome, but we won't know until they drop, adopt their rules. And that's why I think we just need to be flexible because if it comes back with a definition of, you put two 1,200 foot houses on there, and maybe that's what the town wants, is the ability to put two lots, two single family houses on, on that. And again, well. we have had actually like someone, uh, I can remember, I can't remember the road, but they were basically wanted to build a home for their mom right next to their house, and she wanted a full home. She didn't just want an accessory apartment attached to the house. And so they came in and said, can we do this? And they said, no, you can't because it limits it to 50% and it has to be either attached or in uh, an, over a garage or a barn. But the current, the current, current requirements. That's right. One of my concerns is making sure that whatever we do doesn't, doesn't get defeated down the road, that somebody doesn't come in and wants to do exactly that and says, you're not following the state law. So that, that's yeah. something we need to keep working on, I guess. Yeah. Any and other comments? We might not know that until later on, too, right? Yeah. Until after we vote in April. Yeah. So we're going to have to be yeah. Uh, flexible. Yeah. Now, the track that it seems to be on right now, DECB is on the same track of li limiting it to accessory units, but we won't know until they make their final decision. So you may end up having to go forward on at, a at the April town meeting based on the best available information. And then if the state changes the rules, or adopts rules that are contradictory, you may have to make amendments to it later on. So I think what you guys have just talked about before is the difference between option one and option two, right? The comp plan is option one, yeah. with the accessory apartment, and then option two is more single family. Mm -hmm. on the yeah, the allowance of either, so that's option two, minimum compliance. You On this uh, vacant lot, you could either do two single family standalones or you could do a duplex, just like you currently allow. If the state law interpretation comes out that way. Yeah. But like I said, the track that they seem to be on is to say if attached. DECD has said if attached. So that would, those would not be attached. And you could say no. When it comes to that time period, if the law says my oath says I will uphold both state, federal, and local laws. A state law that says exactly the wording that's up there, then I will allow them. I can't not allow them. Period. Right. Whether you make an ordinance that says that I can or not. Like with tiny homes, he has to follow that. Well, I think that's kind of a big deal because we're, we're these tracks take us down apartments. But the state law at this point, which may or may not be clarified down the road, says a dwelling unit, which could be a tiny house, it could be Whole two 1,200 square family. foot houses, two, two, as long as they you know, fit and all those other kinds yeah. of things. So that's, that is you know, a challenge, I think, to us. Again, because sure as I'm sitting here, somebody's gonna say, I wanna you know, build two houses on that lot. And, Two standalone single family houses and uh, yeah, and I'll go back to what the DECB has already put out. And that is this statement right here two units if attached. So, this is a, a kind of a, a flow chart that they set out that that's the direction they're looking. So, uh, but as I point out here, the law doesn't say that. It says, must allow structures with two dwelling units. So two single family is structures, plural, in two units. Well, then it specifically goes into detail about the detached two in the law part, right? Yeah. Like, doesn't say one or, or- Well, again, it just says it can either be in it, attached to it, detached, but I or, mean or any combination. Right, but it talks about the attached versus detached, whereas this is just completely. Yeah. Right. So as we're going forward. And then the other thing, I, I wasn't here when the comp plan was developed. In, in, a, in another life, we're on a comp plan committee. Another, and I will say that the town's comp plan, I think, was superbly done. I mean, it is an excellent comp plan and should help guide not only this decision, but as, you know, it's just a political statement there, but in others as we're going forward. So. 
With that, any other comments from the planning board members? If not, Ms. Wright. One was, sorry, I'm oh, sorry. Um, I don't think I've seen this anywhere, but they, I know they said you can't um, change acreage based on accessory dwelling units, but I assume we can still impose square footage requirements on yes. accessories. On the size of the units. Okay. You can't require, like you can require if they were going to do a duplex, you could require four acres, two acres for each unit. You can't require two acres for the first unit and four acres for the second unit. Oh, sorry. You no, know, I mean. Um, yes, no, I understand. Oh, you. Okay. I, just, yeah. I just wanted to clarify that part of it. But they also said you can make limitations on the size of it. Oh, well. And it's key to understand if we start talking about changing the acreage to four for a duplex, that's another ordinance change. So that, that's it. Yep. Has anyone at the state level said, Wow, what's this going to do to our school system? Silence. Am I? Like, I have no idea. Yeah, Jane. I mean, I, I couldn't tell you. I would, I would hope that some smart people sat down and said, uh, you know, we need to, we need to worry, a concern about. I think it comes from it is, you know, I think it's a good idea. And I say that it's, but it's maybe lots of details to be done. There is a true shortage of housing in May in Maine as it is for many parts of the country. And I think they tried to fix a problem, perhaps didn't realize the law of unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. But I can't answer that, unless somebody else can, but I can't answer that question. But I do need to say, we don't have a lot of choice of this, because one July, if we don't have a law, it reverts to the state law. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically what's up there is option two, so. Sir. Um, I've got a bunch written down here, but the biggest confusion I have so far is we we keep discussing about how we don't know yet, and being a prior law guy, it seems to me that it's been enacted. It's been approved by the governor. It's here written in plain. I printed it off before I got here. I'm confused on where we're getting the idea that something might change or something might not be addressed or something might come up later when it's already in the main revised statute. 4364A simply tells me but a municipality shall allow structures without the two dwelling units. Well, it's already written in the law. Where, yeah, but with that law, same law, says rules, the Department of Economic and Community Development may adopt rules to administer and enforce this section. They shall consult with the ACF uh, pursuant and then those have to go through the legislature. So that could be narrowed down through the rulemaking process. That's what we're saying. Okay. So they could clarify, you can only do a duplex. That would be their interpretation. The Attorney General would look at it and say, can you interpret it that way? And if the legislature approves the rules, then that's gonna have the effect of law. Okay, and uh, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, are we still, regardless of all this, we still have to maintain prior setbacks on each lot, two acres, two and a half acres, regardless? Same, same setbacks. Same setbacks, no matter what. Yeah. So when you start getting into bigger single-family homes, yeah. that fear may disseminate. It may not even be able to fit a second single-family home way over here because you're you're going to get that. So it would have to fit. So maybe it yes. wouldn't even have. Sorry. So the law. That's a really good question. So the law doesn't trump our setback. No. All those the setbacks are still there. None of theirs doesn't trump any of the other stuff. This is specific. Okay. So like back to your question, if you can't fit, then. The first right. thing I look for is a septic design. Right. If they can't get a septic design, they don't get a building permit. So for those of you who don't know, this is Alan Plummer, who is the town's code enforcement. Mm -hmm. uh, I got relatively new, but very good. Just on that issue of setbacks, I mean, the reality is <clears throat> two acre lots, you know, fitting another home somewhere on that lot, that's a lot of land. Uh, in, a, in a town that has like half acre lots, that might be much more of an issue of fitting than it is here, especially if you've got to put in septic systems, then it becomes a real problem. But with two acre lots, you shouldn't think that that's going to be a big limiting factor. Setbacks. The state minimum lot size for a septic design is 20,000 square feet. Which is half of the Yep, half an acre. We may not even run into that issue just to, right. based on setbacks alone. Uh, and then uh, dwelling unit versus accessory apartment is how I'm reading there's only two things that we're talking about. A dwelling unit being any kind of 
like a duplex, the young side, one side of the dwelling unit, and then an accessory apartment is something above the garage or yeah. as an attachment. But it is a dwelling unit as well. Mm -hmm. You have as dwelling yeah. units, you have a single family home yep. is a dwelling unit. Okay. An accessory apartment is a dwelling unit. A duplex is two dwelling units. So a dwelling unit is just the habitation. Okay. Attached, detached, duplex, those are all forms of dwelling of units. Dwelling units. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is, is there a definition of dwelling unit? It's not in here. I just did a quick look at the statute. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what I saw, there's there's accessory dwelling unit and dwelling unit, and the statute uses dwelling unit. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm concerned that someone somewhere thinks that, that this new law limits uh, the limits the additional units as as accessory dwelling units because to me it's I, that's an absurd reading of, of what's written. Um, and Durham because, has definitions of these things too. Right, but we're gonna we're gonna have to follow this, right? And so I guess my, my question is, um, how confident are you that um, the DECD is going to implement rules? I'm pretty confident about okay. the rules because the, the law is so subject to interpretation. I think the challenge, in my mind, the challenge is this, this standalone dwelling unit, a detached home, is to me a very strong, it could be a very strong possibility. It may be a tiny home, it, or it may be another thousand square foot home, or whatever. That, that, that is troublesome to me as we're going forward. But, but I know we also have a timeline we're working against. I think that's a, that's my my struggle with it. Because it, sa it says a municipality shall allow on a lot of one existing dwelling unit, uh, the addition of up to two dwelling units. Right. And so to me, it's a single family home up to, up to three, and there's yeah. room. And that's why DECD is doing rulemaking to try to clarify for every community is is plagued by these same uncertainties. There are quite a few organizations and individuals that are working to get more specifics about this that, that don't like this law that was passed. Is there any, um, <clears throat> is anyone thinking about timing of when, a, what, in what order the structures come? Mm -hmm. So I have a vacant lot that has a garage on it. So no dwelling unit, just a garage. It's a vacant lot. Can I do my accessory dwelling unit first and then put my duplex on knowing that at the end result, I will have an accessory dwelling unit that's only 50% the square footage of the duplex that I'm building on that lot. I'm, I'm gonna look to the code enforcement guy, but- Does it matter in what order I do it as long as the end game is still within the state law? I would think that if you did it, you had it build a garage, and there are lots of parcels around here with just a garage. You put a dwelling unit above that, so now you have an accessory unit. To nothing yet. And then you go to build a duplex, you're gonna have to, you can do that if you go, you know, but if you try to do, as, as long as what follows meets the, our, our codes, then you would be allowed to do that. Is that and unless, the or, unless the ordinance, ordinance specifies sequencing rules, then it would be effective. Of what I'm doing. Is that, Alan, if that were the case, if you had a garage, <clears throat> and somebody put an apartment in there, I've seen that. And then somebody else comes along and says, now I'm gonna build my house next to that house. As long as they met all the other rules. The end result. The end result, the matters. total, yeah. The and total. I would probably put that in, that would be part of the building permit um, conditions, or it would be part of the building permit. That the end result would be, this will be an accessory to a primary that you're going to build in the future. Okay. Something like that. Get a commitment. To whatever. Yeah. And does it have to be, now I'm going back to the definitions again, what if that garage was converted to be strictly a home? No garage, just a dwelling unit. Framed in the two garage doors, put a door out front, and made it just a simple home. Put a bathroom and a kitchen in it, because it's already a standing structure. So not an accessory, it's actually just a dwelling unit. The size of that dwelling unit is approximately 700 square feet. So now you build your duplex, more than 50% of that. So you're at 14 or 1500 square feet per unit. 
and you could build a duplex the size of like a 2,700 square foot duplex. It's going to depend on which of those options the town decides to move in. Okay. Because option three, you need four acres. Right. So that would limit it. And then option one would say you can have, you would get three units on that lot because you have one there now. Right. But if option one, the comprehensive plan goes to vote instead of the other two, then there would be size limits that you'd be constrained by. Size of the? Size of the units. Because accessory units, you're, you would, under, the, under option one, which is the comprehensive plan, yeah. you're allowed one full-size single family and two accessory dwelling units, which can only be 50% of the floor area of that single family. Each or together? It would have to be each. Okay. Yeah. Because if, if you go together, Alan and I had this discussion today. Yeah. So if you're saying that the accessory unit can be half the floor area of the duplex, mm -hmm. that's which, a third unit. Which size would it would so it would have and we'd have to specify in the language. That wouldn't it wouldn't really follow what the intent is to say it's gotta be small. It's a third no, full size unit. Full size yeah, unit. So that doesn't make sense. So you'd have to have half of that one unit. Half of one. Right. Half of one. So if you built a seven, you took a garage, made it seven hundred square feet living unit, yeah, or yeah. whatever the hell we're looking, excuse me, whatever we're going to call it. Yeah. Yep. Um, you'd have to have fourteen. The two duplexes would have to be fourteen hundred square feet each. Mm -hmm. Is that in order for that to qualify? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And my last question, I'll let I'll shut up. Uh, no, we're not good. The uh, <laughs> the comprehensive plan is strict, like something that we should be following. Like is the why have a comprehensive plan if we're not going to follow it? Okay, so let me, yeah, let me clarify. How that. strict is the comprehensive plan? Yeah, so plan. what you have to recognize is a comprehensive plan is a long range plan for the town. Typically, they cover 10 years. So 2028 would be the next time that the town would update it because conditions could change sure. and policies could need to be changed. Sure. So, what that does is it looks at everything from transportation to uh, environment to housing to economic development. And it lists a whole bunch of goals. And sometimes those goals can contradict each other. Like Jane was raising the issue of the impact on public services, schools. So if you do more affordable housing, you end up potentially with more impact on the schools. So it doesn't say you must do this, you must do this. It says consider. That was the language that was in there. Consider this after you weigh the other. So, but under main law, Whatever land use ordinances you adopt must be consistent with your comprehensive plan. So you couldn't say, okay, we're gonna keep the whole town rural and then propose a, a, a very high density, thousand unit uh, project in contradiction of the comprehensive plan. If, if, and this has happened in other towns like Scarborough, where they've gone forward with one of these big, like, uh, was it, uh, Scarborough Downs, uh, mm -hmm. only in the opposite direction. The comprehensive plan said do this, and then somebody tried to do it, and the town council, because of political pressure, shot it down and went to court. This was in the early 2000s, and the main Supreme Court said, if it's in your comprehensive plan, you can't go in the opposite direction. But it takes a lawsuit and a court yeah, process yeah. to yeah. determine that. So you should take it seriously, but you're not locked into it. I understand, thank you. Sir. A couple questions. So I know in the past we have not become more restrictive than the state in a lot of cases. Um, and I'm just looking at this, making sure that we're gonna probably follow the, the level line of what the, what the state does, um, only because we didn't want conflict between us and the state. I know we've tried to do that in the past with planning board um, issues or ordinances, I should say. Um, so I'm uh, just wondering what the thought process is on, on not being more restrictive, or if we're more restrictive, what kind of pushback might we get? I've got a second question having to do with what Jane was talking about. Driveways. Yeah, I mean, I personally, I can tell you my personal opinion is 
is I, I think if you go and the, this, the state is trying to do something here, obviously. They're not trying to restrict something, they're trying to open something up. So if you try to restrict from what they're gonna do, you're gonna, you may run into the, the state, whether it be a judge or a, you know, some bureaucrat somewhere saying that was not the, you know, you're not following the law and that you can't, you must do that. So the question of, it can be a second single family home. If we say it can't and somebody else does, that's, that's a personal issue I'm, I'm trying to come to, to grips with. But then I try to restrict. the state did in this law say you can require area per unit. So theoretically for three full size units, you could require six acres where you now only require two. That seems to be going in the opposite direction of what the state was intending, but they put that into the law, so you can so, do it. So back to option three, where you have the lot, it'd be able to set the on, option for a larger lot. You <laughs> might have to grandfather at that point some of those properties, either yeah. the way the yeah. law gets implemented, right, and then go from there. Okay. And, and what is ambiguous is the law, in my, and on law of unintended consequences, because you know, next thing you know, you're, you're somebody's tr trying to do something on six acres that they could have done on two, and now you've just used up four more acres of that, whatever. So, but you also just we, I know in our ordinances at one time when folks put a, a second dwelling unit on their property, regardless of the size of the property, um, access to the second dwelling unit on the back lot required roadway. Still do. Okay. We're going to be talking about that on the road this year. Yeah, because that, I mean, family does split apart eventually. Um, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately for folks. Yeah. And, and the houses get sold, and that's the second issue is tax base. So, what what do we tax this? I mean, I, this is probably more of a question for the select board. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, how are we going to handle this from a tax standpoint? Back to Jamie's question about schools. Um, you know, is it just square footage or is it more than that? Are you sharing a septic system from a separate one? I mean, it almost can become a separate house septic system and everything all together. It doesn't have to be combined if there's room. Mm -hmm. And so you then end up with a lot split, possibly. Okay. I don't think, and maybe somebody else could have to do it all the talking, but I don't think the intent of this is to split lots. I mean, you could, you could very well, but it, this is, in my, my mind at least, more of a rental deal, where you are renting the apartment upstairs, the basement downstairs, the garage, tiny house, big house, half a duplex. It is, um, you know, they, I suppose, you know, that to me that becomes a rental, and then I guess Donna Hayes could say, well, you've increased the value of your property, um, and therefore, I could, you know, you're gonna pay, instead of being 150,000 as a single family house, you have an apartment, so it's two hundred thousand dollars, and you know. So I, I don't know the answer to that one, Joe. I mean, that's, but that's. I, I'm not an assessor either, but basically, what they look at is a couple of things. Number one, how much money have you put into the improvements, because that's taxable value. Uh, and then secondly, how have comparable properties? How much have they sold for? So if it was a single family, and, and all the homes in Durham that have accessory apartments sell for. 50% more than just a basic single family because of divert income, then she'll base it on that. Com comparison plus how much uh, value is there. It would be less than a lot split because there's an automatic um, amount attached to a lot split, period, before anything is approved. So that wouldn't necessarily come into play. So it might be based on value. That's the great question for Donna. Yeah. Unless we Uh, you can you can mandate valuation. That's a state law. Yeah. George, um, back to Joe's question: Does the D is it DEPD? Yep. Um, Department of Economic and Community Development. Do they talk anything about making it more restrictive on that that example 
Well, what they are saying is, look, the state legislature has roped in the towns on how restrictive you can be, and these are the rules. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're doing, trying to clarify what those rules say. But they haven't spoken specifically about any examples. Like well, they've given, I gave all the planning board members that guy, that uh, the publication that they just put out. Mm -hmm. I scaled it down. You don't need to talk about big affordable housing projects because you don't do them. So I limited it to this part. And so if you look at there, you'll see what they're saying. It, it, the, the limitations that we really talk about in this context of Durham would be the lot size, right? And, and, there's the, not, type of, and there's, the type of unit. And, and, that's exactly well, right. except that's going to be limited by what the DECD says if, when they make their rules. Yeah, and they may say exactly the same thing when they do. Let me say accessory units. Right. So, but we, we can't go, if they say accessory units, we can't, well, but really the- But you can always allow more than they allow. Right. That's what they said, right, in the law. You can allow more units and more bigger units than they require. So if the state said, you must allow two, uh, two a duplex, you could, you must allow a duplex, you could still allow two indivi individual single family by your law, as long as you're not being more restrictive than they than they afford. So they're not they're, they're saying you can always go be more in, more allowance than the state. We love that. I, I'm, I'm still struggling with that. I mean, I <laughs> because I I still think it it's in my mind it still says you can have a single family home, two two single family home, three single family, but all fits. In the parameters, I, I but that's how I would interpret it. And, and right now, that's the way it is. I think these fears will be tampered by setbacks, your septic plan, your leach fields, your distance from a well, your distance off of your other structure. You physically can't put two single family homes on a two acre lot without encroaching on your setback. Mm -hmm. I try. <laughs> you just, you, you, unless you put them right on top of each other, and then you're, you're, you might as well just connect them and make it a duplex. A butter wells and septics come into play as well. Correct. They still have differences. Yeah. So you, so these fears of like, oh my goodness, I might see three single family homes on a two acre lot. If physically, by code enforcement, by law, other laws that are already protecting that fear. So most of your additional, I'll call them, whatever I don't know what we're calling them, anymore, accessory units will always be smaller and more contained simply because you've got setbacks and, and um, septic uh, Of course, that assumes designs. that the lot is only two acres. Two acres. Correct. So you Correct. could have four acres, six acres, 10 acres. Correct. You know, near the road, that's where they put all the houses. Okay. Yep. So they may be able to do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so when you put an accessory, an accessory apartment on of some sort, or a tiny house, are you using the same septic or are you putting a second septic in? You want to address that? Uh, it just, septics are designed for a number of bedrooms. Yeah. So if, if you can, you might be able to expand an existing septic. Um, once you go over five bedrooms, you need another septic tank as well as a larger leach field. So you could, there's a possibility to expand the existing septic, or you could do a completely different septic if you have the space and the soil test comes back. There is language in the law that addresses that issue of what do you have to do on septic. And basically, uh, they, 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 and this is the same for like adding an accessory apartment. Uh, you either have to, have someone certify that your septic system is large enough for that extra unit to be added, or you have to design a system that if it, that if it fails, you can expand it. There's like those types of rules. I think they put that into this law as well. Yeah. Um, I just happen to know a couple of people that own tiny homes, and I was just wondering if you started out, say you have two acres, and you put a tiny home on it, and then later decide to sell the land, do, does that piece of land now consider that tiny home, like, is that as if that's a single family dwelling? And I mean, I'm talking about the size of 
other homes that you'll be able to put there. Like, hopefully you could still put a full size family home and then all of a sudden the tiny home would become an accessory home. You know, I'm just thinking of like all these, like it has to be half the size and all that. It kind of starts out as a single family home because it's the only one there. But it would depend would where call? it sits on the property. Well, I mean, if it, if it fits, oh. but I would keep looking at the, the code guy, but it, and please join in if I'm um, stretching. But it would seem like if you had four acres and, and you had a tiny home on it, and then you split it and the tiny home was on two acres, um, I would think the rules would apply to that new parcel. Whatever rules we come up with, the rules would apply. And so the, the other one that is now, if it's if it's the right size, it could that could now get a, an accessory apartment or whatever. Yeah. So again, it goes. I think it goes back to the total when it's all said and done. You know. So. Yeah. It, and that's the code. And for these guys, got to sit there and say, you know, that's a seven hundred square foot tiny home or a garage complex, and those two duplexes are only eleven hundred square foot each. They either got to be bigger or you can't do it. Yeah. So, so I would definitions think, might change. That's the only thing I was thinking. It might get complicated. I would think if somebody was going to put a tiny home on a two-acre lot, they would need to really be thoughtful for sale purposes right. afterwards, where they situate that, right. so that you would have the room and the setbacks for the other person. Yeah, it right? increased the value of their home for resale. Mm -hmm. Certainly, yeah. yeah. The, I'm guessing. Right? Yeah. But I mean, it's just like a weird complication that could happen because well, people like per those types of mutations to this jewel. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he gets paid all the big ones. <laughs> I'm sorry, what else is? I just had a question about you talked about the covenant for mm -hmm. subdivisions. Would you? Yeah, this law it? Makes, it, makes a specific exemption that says this does not preempt private covenant. Subdivisions, so that uh, this law, so you've got subdivisions across Val, uh, Durham mm -hmm. that have private covenants that say one single family. Okay. This new law going into effect doesn't make those private covenants null and void to say now you can put two. Those private covenants rule. That's written into the law. Are our subdivisions are all that are they all? Um, like that, you know? I don't, you know, some of them, in, in a subdivision way. can be someone just selling off two lots. Oh. Usually that's not, if it's a private road, the homeowners maintain it, that's usually their covenants. Okay. The, the, what I'll go check when I get back, because I was a public road, but we have a subdivision ordinances at Hunter Hill, and I'd have to check those to see if we have to be restricted or not. I'm not sure we do. And that's the way it is on, uh, you know, where I am at Millbrook and Cedar Pond Road, there are covenants in the deeds right. and building en envelopes, and those would all still apply. Yeah, yeah. those are protected by the law. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, is there a, a, any feelings towards one way or another, the, the options, or? Can we turn that on you first? That was to give my instructions. I'm glad you on. That's where, where the board is thinking. I think we're not there yet, or I'm not there yet. I mean, I think this this opens the the process, if you will. So it leads to, I guess, a question I'm going to address later, which is we have this informational meeting tonight. The board will spend uh, the next couple of months putting together a draft article that will you know, build on this and, and your input. And then we draft an, draft an article what we think it should be. It goes to the, the selectmen who, you know, and we're on the discussion probably monthly about them too when we're sitting there. So we'll get feedback from them as well. So uh, we're just trying to get a feel, a little bit of a feel for the town is, and also some of the questions you asked, we probably had not had thought, it, thought of yet. So I think the, the short answer is, Putting that baby to a future meeting. Yeah. Oh, but but also, John mentioned we talked about doing a survey. Yeah, thank you. We're also going to do a, a survey that will get out there to a bunch of folks. And um, uh, so, you know, please please pass the word on all of this. But 
if you've got a preference after this, I know you, a lot of you are also thinking about it for the first time, but if short of, you know, don't do anything, uh, in which we just let the state law take effect, but we're, we're doing this to get your feedback so that basically when we get to the town meeting, it, we may not have a consensus, what we present may lose, but at least people will have the opportunity to, to address this and, and go forth with it. And there are a lot of questions. You know, we're talking about roads next, but how do you treat access to these houses? And that that's a big deal. And you know, so. And John, just surveys can be online, right? Yes. Yeah. And just to keep it simple to understand, what I keep saying is, look, you're either going to make it less restrictive to expand housing opportunities, or you're going to make it more restrictive to limit growth and development, or you're going to be neutral. Those are the three basic policy and directions. Follow, is neutral follow just do the state, what the state says, and no more, no less. Yeah, the right. least restrictive is following our comp plan. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Right. Make the right. duplex down to two acres. Yep. Yes. It's it's only money. Money. Yep. Re Remind right. me the building um, size for lots again. Remember, it was two acres. Two acres for a single family and two and a half acres for a duplex. duplex. And that's across the town now. That's, that's everywhere. All across that's everywhere. everywhere. Does, does the town use what they call builder's acres or real acres? I mean, a 200 by 200 is not a real acre. Yeah, yeah. And, and technically, yeah, they call them like the, a true acre is 43, 560. Right. Mm -hmm. A builder's acre is 40,000. And same thing. Durham has 90,000 square feet for a single family, which is a little bit over, like 8.04 or something like that. I can't remember the number. So it's just a little bit more. So it's kind of builders acres but it's not 80,000 it's 90,000 and then uh, the duplex is 120,000 that's how it's right around, around it up yeah. okay will there still be exemptions I know when I and, and the, the uh, development I'm in uh, the builder got exemptions to make some of the lots smaller yeah, if he put if he put reserve land that's yeah. a cluster and it probably got 40,000 square foot lots or 45,000 square foot uh, lots. They're slightly smaller than the two acres, Yeah. but they put separate, basically Honestly. he took wetland land that he couldn't build yeah. on a side and yeah. preserve it. Yeah, so either one of two things would be, number one, look at the covenants, because it may just say, you can only put a single family. But also, they may be grandfathered, quote unquote, in terms of the size, because they're worse, like, uh, when the town eliminated the Southwest Bend Grove District, that allowed one acre lots along uh, Davis Road, mm -hmm. up near Royal Borough Road. So those are now grandfathered from the two acre requirement. So those one acre lots, he would approve as a single family road. You come up with something that we decide we're gonna vote on, and it fails, and we automatically mm -hmm. end up with what the state has. Yeah. Yes. Is that correct? So we should be doing all of this and the town votes it down, and then yep, yep. Yeah. And then you go with the neutral. Just do what the state says. Okay. okay. So that's one of the reasons we're trying to actually have the say of what we want to do, rather than just go in and get whacked down at the uh, town <coughs> meeting. And if people want to vote against it, then just recognize that it defers to it. Alan said he's got to follow the state law. So, anything else on? The, so please give us your feedback, and it can be on the survey, it can be on an email to the town planner. Uh, we will take into consideration uh, what we want to do, and we'll be talking to the selectmen to get their input as well. So, sure. I'm an advocate for the going with the comprehensive plan um, option, but uh, how much, getting back to her comment about um, the town vote, how much weight does that really have in the town vote? I mean, we all voted on the cop plan, and that's pretty heavy, heavily weighted in this decision. And, uh, if, it, if it gets voted down as a town vote, do we have to um, revise the comp plan? No, no, no. no. We don't have to change the comp plan, it's just, I mean, the comp, the comp plan is, is what it is now. I think we're we do allow it an accessory unit now. Uh, we do a lot of duplexes with a two and a half acre lot. So as George said at the beginning, we're part way part way there with meeting the, the goals of the, the state. So, so 
my opinion would just be to don't jump in the mud if you don't want to get dirty. If you have a state law that's already been passed down and a comprehensive plan that is already looking to go and do these things, mm -hmm. I don't think it even needs to be brought to a vote because then you run into the situation of someone who's not paying attention for four to six months with an idea what we're even talking about in this room. Which happens a lot. All the time. It, yep. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, you're all gonna sit together and vote together. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right, right, right. Uh, things happen all the time where people just, and it's, it's a free country, you don't have to get involved in politics if you don't want to. Uh, but I, my recommendation was is to not muddy the waters and, and either take what the state is saying or go down to the, uh, the comprehensive plan. The only thing I don't like about the comprehensive plan is if you lower that duplex to two acres, you're getting tighter and tighter on your accessory dwelling unit, which the state says that you're allowed these accessory dwelling units. So if you make it tighter for me to do these accessory dwelling units that I'm allowed to do, now I'm getting into setbacks and I'm getting into septic plans where now I can't abide by the state law because the comprehensive plan has limited me to two acres. But I think, no, no, no it's setbacks. not limiting me. It's saying that the least amount you can have is two acres. You can have three acres or four acres right. and do what you want to do. You just can't have So if someone has, their, their lot's too small to do the fold, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. that, one, that one lot is limited. It's just too small. Okay. Yeah, but there are other lots that are. They're much bigger. Okay, I get, yeah. I get And the hybrid version could be that you leave it and don't use two and go and stay at two and a half instead of two, right. all the comp plan except for so that's a two-way yeah, That'd be my right. So for, for the comp plan, though, and I don't want to sound like I'm advocating one way or the other because I'm really not. I mean, it says to allow the standard two-acre lot unless there's an objective basis. And, you know, we've heard multiple times, you know, when we were for the election and everything, you know, the, the town growth is a major issue. And to me, um, you know, we should be considering that issue that has been raised by many, many people. I think that's an objective basis to not follow the comp, the comp plan, which would then uh, you know, prevent the Scarborough incident uh, from happening to, to, to us, I think. So I, I, think if we, I, I think that the survey is a great idea. And, I, and, and thinking about that now, my question would be, and you probably don't have an answer to this, uh, but what type of weight are you going to give to the survey? Just input. I think it's just well input like this. Sorry for the comp plan. We I was on that committee and we used the surveys that we got. That was held high. Like the weight was great for surveys. And it depends on what the results are. Yeah. So for example, in the comprehensive plan, you had twenty five percent of the people in town that wanted to have growth area restrictions and make sure get 75% of all future housing in Durham to help in right in this area. And then you had 25% of the respondents that said, oh, let's just get rid of all of the town's zoning requirements and go with what the state minimums are. So state minimum is half an acre, 20,000 square foot minimum lot size law. So just let, get rid of all the Durham controls and just go with the state minimums. That, that got about less than 20%. Focus all the growth in one small area, that got less than 20%. 60%, 55% was keep it rural with two acre lots. So the survey will kind of get the pulse to say which direction the, the, the majority of people lean won't give you precise results, but that's how a planning board uses the information. If everybody's all over the place, that's a result too, that's hard to say, oh yeah, well, that's a result. So you know people are all over the place. How's your question gonna read? On the Don't survey? know yet. I'm, I'm putting it, that's what he asked. <laughs> yeah. If you wanna offer questions. Yeah, I'm gonna punt it. That, that does is a good question. I'm punting, we're punting that one down the road. We're going to take everything we heard here, the survey, and other results. The process going forward is we will draft, we'll take all that into consideration. Take anything you provide after the fact. We have to have the planning board has to have a public hearing before it goes to the town meeting. So the draft article will have another public hearing. That'll be a more formal, not information. This is what it, what it is. The public will have an opportunity. 
come in and say you didn't pay any attention to what we said or whatever it may be and uh, we'll go from there okay. does that make sense so that so first Saturday of April is the, the town meeting probably the end of February we have to have a final draft article that can get published and all those other kinds of things so look forward to by January late January first part of February We'll have another. We'll have a formal public hearing on this. Okay. And probably what will happen is, you folks over the next, you know, between now and mid December, will kind of formulate which of these three yep. options to head in, and then they'll meet with the select board or communicate with the select board and say, look, this is what we think are thinking, and then get the endorsement for the select board to move forward with option one, option two, or option three. And then we we'll draft the language. We've already drafted like the three in the amendments, which might have to be tweaked, but basically then then we go and have a public hearing on that. Right, so this isn't the, the final thing, and I am, if anybody else has, I'm still gonna punt it down the road a little ways, but we wanted to start, as I said at the beginning, we're not ready to make a decision on that one, so. Fair enough? I can punt with the best one. All right, the next topic is roads, which ties into this one a little bit better or not. George will go through the uh, thing. There was a uh, article before the town at the last town meeting that uh, uh, got blown out of the water uh, and changed. And so uh, we sat down and said, okay, what are the things that are probably not, there are not gonna be controversial, how could, based on what the town said at that meeting, what can we change? And so he's gonna go through uh, some of the changes on there, the same process. We're gonna get your input tonight, do all that other stuff, draft an article, and take it before the, the town meeting. So this is a small piece of, I guess, the overall roads question. And we still, and we're doing, whatever we end up doing with the affordable housing piece, we have to figure out the roads part of that as well, so. I'll start with the basic rules. Okay, first is that uh, under section 5.7 of the land use ordinance, uh, back lots can be established on a 50-foot right-of-way. A driveway serving a single back lot must be 20 feet in width, which is really a private road, and it must meet the street construction standards except for shoulders and paving. Those can be approved by the code officer, and if there's two or more back lots, then they have to do an engineered road plan, which is most towns call them private ways, that meet all of the requirements for a private street except for paving. And the public works director, excuse me, it should be the road commissioner and CEO approve that, but the maintenance agreement has to go to the planning board. And most towns, as I say, treat those as private ways. Uh, for roads, there's a provision for roads, that's pretty much what it's titled, and it really, it only deals with the uh, maintenance agreement for the planning board to approve. Doesn't deal with any engineered standards and no construction standards. So. It just, it's kind of a hodgepodge and it causes confusion for the road commissioner, for the code officer, and the planning board as to who approves what and what are the standards that we should be applying. So we've tried to clean this up now at two town meetings. Um, and so uh, the going, trying to simplify it, we would basically go back to where it was last uh, April uh, on back lots, leave it the 50 foot right of way, limit it to one single back lot, and if it is one, you can have 16 feet instead of 20, uh, approved by the fire chief as well as the code officer. So before the code officer issues a building permit, fire chief inspects the road and makes sure that he can get his equipment back there without damaging them. Uh, and then take out the stuff for the multiple lots and put them over into 5.23 and then put pretty much the engineer plan and the planning board, if it's just gonna be reviewing the maintenance agreement, really wants, last spring they said, look, just let the staff do it. Let them review the plan, let them review the maintenance agreement, let the rules be very specific and leave it that way. So at the last town meeting, as John said, uh, the two concerns were, people were divided over whether these non-subdivision roads should be paved or gravel. You might remember, we had a public hearing and we heard both, but it seemed the majority over at the Eureka Center uh, said that we would let them be gravel for family compound type development. Uh, when we got to town meeting, uh, that was a controversial issue. 
and then there was also confusion, oops, sorry, confusion over whether the language changes proposed at that time would say that these roads can be accepted by the town. So the select board asked, and we put into this a clear statement that you can't get a road accepted except at town meeting. So that's kind of what we're proposing to try to get this through the next town meeting and fix this mess that's in the current land use ordinance. Okay, is there any discussion amongst the planning board? I do have a question, George. Where are we putting that last statement that we added? It's gonna be in this language right here. Okay. Right now, there's, a, there's already a statement in there that says the plan must have a statement on it saying the town will not be acceptable, uh, responsible for the acceptance. We're gonna add a statement to say acceptance of any road must go to town meeting. Any other comments on uh, other than I think we need to figure out how, if we, whatever we do with affordable housing, is it going to require a maintenance agreement uh, for that? Uh, if we get into separate units, separate building structures, whatever it may be. So, uh, although I guess if it's one owner, that may be less of an less of an issue than that. But those will have to be in 901 Street if there's more than one house on the driveway. So it'll have to get that. Would have to So Whatever. this new law is affecting this proposal because last spring what we proposed was that that single back lot could only have a single family dwelling on it. Right. We've taken out that language because they could theoretically have the same two units mm -hmm. and that new law has affected this. So. so now you have to have a driveway big enough to handle those three units mm -hmm. that you have now. Mm -hmm. and and then, yeah. 20 foot? Yeah. On a two and a half. Sixteen Well, the idea was, I mean, a 20-foot road to serve one house, is big one road. family, right. that is a massive investment. A 16-foot oh, yeah. isn't cheap, but it's the wider big. you make it, the width makes it substantially more expensive. Mm -hmm. And that you know, for a single home, they have to have a road. That's the question. So I think back to what you're saying, John, 16 would only be one. Yes. Unit, right? yeah. And then if this goes through yep. multiple units, it would be and, so and yeah, we, yeah, we could oh, put on, now should an accessory apartment, if you've got like an in-law or somebody living there, should you have to go to a 20-foot road to have the mother-in-law living there, or mm -hmm. duplex, <laughs> duplex maybe. Does our ordinance well, I think that is, is that the problem with the mother-in-law is that, is that eventually the mother-in-law yeah. 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 somebody else um, But it is, it is limited to 50%, so you're not gonna have a family with five kids each with a car, potentially, theoretically. You could have two cars and, but my, I would lean to, I will actually not on fun on this one, I would lean towards if they want to have two, whatever the heck we're calling them, dwelling yeah. units, living units, accessory apartments, okay. then they've got to, they, they have a wide one wide the road. Yeah, you can specify that. That would, so you can be my feeling single on family that. home, uh, 20 or anything more. Why would it need to be 20? Why does it need to be 20 for the other one? I, I think you're talking about getting more, there's a fire, there's more people that have to get back there. So a 16 foot road is is a pretty wide road, even for a fire truck. So I'd be interested in hearing what the fire chief says about it. Oh, absolutely. That. And, and when Chief and I talked about this last night, he, he and, and the road commissioner are gonna weigh in on these comments as well. Yeah. Isn't it they have to be able to pass simultaneously in the in the drive? That's what Isn't that? I don't know, that's what I've heard in the past. And the ambulance has to leave and the fire department's still going in. Yeah, that, it will, we'll leave that dis discussion. Yeah, yeah. As, as what I would, in another life, <coughs> as a developer, you know, you ran into the cul-de-sacs, couldn't have a cul-de-sac and all that other stuff, but one astute town planner told me that fire trucks have a reverse and they can actually back up. So. <laughs> And some towns make pull-offs for every so many hundred feet. There's a pull-off. It's not just the fire truck. It could be an oil delivery truck. Yeah. It's coming Cash in, back. and the mm -hmm. homeowner's coming out. Somebody's going to back, unless you have a fellow. But even 16 feet, I mean, eight foot, you know, the standard road lane is 
10 to 12 feet, yeah. so you get eight feet. Yeah. So two normal passenger vehicles can pass on a 16 foot wide driveway. Or I don't have giant trucks here, so. <laughs> I mean, I would say that if, if the chief comes back and says it has to be 20, I would probably you know vote in his favor. He's already in, weighed in on this, and if he gets to approve it to make sure it's passable, he was good with the 16. Okay. But that was a single. Did we talk to him about multiple? No. And we would need to update him on this. Yep. And I sent him this stuff this morning, so. Because it, it's, it's, it, I'm thinking if it's a family compound, that's a, that's a low traffic area, unless there's an emergency. So it would be really his way in is what you want. Yeah, I mean, if he's comfortable, he's comfortable. whatever, he's going to, you know, it, it, that's, the issue is safety, I think. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm all for, you know, not spending extra money, if we don't, if, Forcing somebody to spend extra money, um, but, but, but I think it. How much can you say it's a family compound? Then that's going to change. You're right. It's well, going to change. So, yeah, Man, but still, the number is low. The, the traffic is yeah, low. I don't know. I've driven by a lot of accessory unit buildings. You know, the crap load of cars, trucks, <laughs> snowmobiles, and you bring up a good question. Uh, these multiple units that are on the same lot. There's no way. Can you sell off one of those units to someone else without selling the lot? Yes. You can't yeah. sell off a. You, you could sell a duplex. Yes. And it's not sell. Condominiumize it. Minimize it. Yeah. yeah. You could just sell one of the like units. The land, like you would they own the land in common. Yeah. They own the unit separately. It's a condo. You can do that. And there's a whole bunch of these strict mm -hmm. rules about you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. condos and other stuff. How to make it a condo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so this. Access to this back lot. The back lot could have, if we move forward with all this, could have three units on it. Mm -hmm. But, well, it's, not, but no. it's still one lot. If it's already existing, but if it's if it's vacant, you can only put two on it under the state law. So you get a multiple. But it, unless it, it, you it, go it, it, with the comprehensive it, plan recommendation, but so as, as John was alluding, you could limit the driveway for 16 feet to a single family dwelling. Anything more than that, you could make that 20 feet. Right, because as it's drafted now, I mean, you were talking about like it should be 20, but as it's drafted now, this new new state law is still it's still one lot. So yeah, but the new state law would allow you to increase the width of the driveway for right. the additional unit. They don't say anything about that. They just say the lot area can't be required to be much bigger. You could potentially have on two a a lot and a back lot, which I don't like to put a lot in a back lot, you could have six living units yeah. on those. No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Back lots and how many items they can have on it? Well, you got a single family house. On, uh, let's just say you have 10 acres. Mm -hmm. And so a single family house is sitting on that now. Mm -hmm. So he splits it into two five acre lots. So that single family on one is allowed two accessory units. You put a single family on the other lot, and he's allowed to under, under the new law. If they have enough, if they have enough, but if they yes, don't all have those other things. Then, then it becomes a back lot, mm -hmm. and I think the rules are different. Mr. Code Enforcer, <laughs> help me out. No, here. Not if this law goes through. If it's a, if it's a lot, a lot is a lot. And right, if it's a lot, lot, it's a lot. lot. And this law would apply to it. In yeah. the new state law, they don't have back lots. They have, it's just a lot. It's a lot. It's the back lot comes in when it, correct me if I'm wrong, please. Uh, the, the back, the term back lot comes down to the municipality. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So the state law doesn't say anything. You can see a lot is a lot. You can but if you create those back lots under the law, the rules apply to the back lot as much as any other lot. Right. <laughs> now, I think, you know, the question is how many people, you know, we're spending a lot of, a lot of time, we should, we need right. to do that. But how many people are going to put six? You'd six? be surprised. <laughs> Probably. <Why wouldn't>. <laughs> but that takes a lot of forethought, right? And I'm glad that you brought up the question about setbacks because yeah. that makes me feel better. And yeah. how many people build a house with an expanded septic system, right? Um, who, who does that? I'm right in the middle of trying to work with this gentleman in front of me. Uh, I had a three acre lot here in Durham, uh, and I'm currently trying to do this new law and put a duplex in. And with that duplex, I'm already really close to my setbacks. Like really close. With a two car garage and two units on either side of those two car garage, 
I'm at 95 feet in my duplex on a two acre lot. So I have 300 feet, you do the math, you got, you know, I don't know what I'm working, you're, you're already close to it, mm -hmm. really close to it. And, and so when you start adding that accessory dwelling unit, is exactly what I'm trying to work with is I'm starting to run out of room with my septic plan, my septic mm -hmm. design, and I have three acres. Yeah. And I'm already running out of room. Mm -hmm. so the accessory unit could go behind that if you use your garage. Correct. It can go, yeah. but I just, I just don't want to take down the garage that's already there. More people yeah. are designing with a larger septic system. What's that? Initially, more people are designing a septic system larger than they need Correct. for the Correct. current building. And in fact, if someone puts a garage in with an unfinished room over the top and they haven't expanded their septic system, I will suggest it because they're going to get stuck and they're going to, it's there. You, you're going to do something with it. Please plan ahead right. for, for yourself. And as a new investor, the people that I talk to in my realm of world is you do that anyway. You, you, you don't want to dig a hole twice. It costs a lot of money to get excavation in there and lay sure, slabs. Course. Everybody knows that. I don't right. want to undermine anybody's intelligence here, but these fears of, oh, it's popping up. It, I don't know. I've run into problems just on three acres. Um, so I, I will then stop us here and open it up because I've done all the talking to the other planning board members on either back, uh, back lots and the or the, the affordable housing piece. Are we going to include any questions in the survey about roads? Yes, I would like to you yeah. say, are you okay with this language or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this feel? There was a public hearing last year, and I think everybody left with a warm and fuzzy that it, it was okay, and then it wasn't at the town meeting, so the more input we get. Yeah, yeah you could ask that question. If you have a road serving five family members, mm -hmm. uh, they're giving off lots for their children, should that be allowed to be gravel or should it be paved? Right. That would be an example of the question you might put on the survey. And the width. Yeah. And you want to try to keep it so that the survey question doesn't raise more questions. That's right. That's, right. <laughs> That's your hard part of doing the survey. Yeah. You have to really keep it in simple language. It may yes. not be yes, technically you know. precise, but at least the person understands what you're asking and give yeah. you an answer. Yeah. Alan and I will follow up with the fire chief to talk about this issue that's come up. I'm, I'm sure he's already said he's okay with a single family home back there on a 16 foot driveway. The question would be, okay, what if they had an accessory apartment? And what if under the new law, they don't have, we have to allow a duplex back there. Would we still be okay with 16 feet? And we could put in, if it's more than, if it's two or more, then it has to be two or more dwelling units. It has to be 20 feet. We can put that right into that. So, so we will follow up. Does it have the primary lot in the front and the back lot have same access? No, and then, and I think you, then I think you get bunted over into here and mm -hmm. says it's the two or more back lots. Although that's a but question. you could have the back lot and then the principal lot from the back lot. Right. They could both have combined access. access. There's a lot of, a lot of traffic. More traffic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Typically, what they do there is they make it wide, wider to the split. Yeah, so the chief, I mean, the chief yep. would, we'll that that would come back and say, so, you know, we don't necessarily want to make it wide, more expensive for somebody to do it. I mean, part of their goal should be to, you know, there are lots of people out there who would like. I'm not one of them who would like their kids to move back to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and they feel free to put that on there because, uh, but there are people who want to take care of grandma or take care of the kids or vice versa. So, okay, I'm sorry. Any Alan? Okay, so then the next steps are um, get the survey out there and then please talk it up. Please make sure your friends. No, I mean, if there's a reason they can't come, uh, this stuff is on the web, uh, the town page, and they can email uh, George if, if they had stuff. Uh, but we are looking for for town input, and uh, we want to we want to keep this process moving at the same time. And as a plug for the other things, we as a planning board are handling these two projects. The conservation commission is handling the resource protection. Um, taking properties out that shouldn't be there, putting properties in that, that should be. Uh, so they're also doing the same process there, so keep your eyes open for their process. And the Historical Commission is working on uh, some changes to their, their ordinance as well. So 
Thank you all for coming, and I much appreciate it. Feel free to take any of those materials with you.